Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Safian. I'm an application engineer with AWR Corporation. We are recently a national instruments company. And we're going to talk this morning about using AWR software tools to simulate a Doherty power amplifier. And then we'll further linearize the amplifier with digital pre-distortion. So we're going to break the analysis into two separate tools. Microwave Office is our circuit tool, and Visual System Simulator, or VSS, is our system tool. And we'll put them both together in the final top level analysis. So just a quick review of Doherty amplifiers. They've recently come back into favor, but they were originally invented 75 years ago. Uh, the reason they've come back into favor recently is their ability to handle high peak to average ratio signals with good efficiency. So the obvious next question is, why do we care so much about efficiency? Well, where do you think the cost is to the cell carriers in these little shacks that we see scattered all around the country? And I'll give you a hint, it's none of the above. The real cost is in sucking the heat out of those buildings. It's in buying electricity. So any improvement in efficiency reduces the costs of cooling and today we have amplifier designers literally chasing single digit and even fractional percentages of efficiency improvements because that translates directly to significant cost reductions in the cost of maintaining these shacks, especially in places like Phoenix and Dallas where I live. So the basic Doherty configuration looks like this. There's two amplifiers. And unlike the traditional balanced amplifier approach where we just split a signal, maybe add some phasing, amplify both halves, and then recombine, the Doherty amplifier uses different biasing schemes. And that's how it achieves the improvements in efficiency. The class AB amp is biased uh, so that it carries as much of the load by itself as it can. And the peaking amp is biased class C, so it's off until the carrier amp starts to saturate. And then the peaking amp will, in class C bias, essentially self-bias, and it'll pick up the load as the power increases, but it does so in a way that minimizes the additional DC power consumption. So that's where the efficiency comes from. And at high power, both amplifiers are driving at 25 ohm load, which then gets transformed by the quarter wave section back up to 50 ohms in the overall system. So one of the features, if you want to call it that, of today's power amplifiers is they look like dead shorts. So there's quite a bit of work that has to be done to match these amplifiers. Uh, in this case, we're using uh, NXP devices. And we're somewhat fortunate because when we run a load pull on these devices, it turns out that the optimal match point for both power and efficiency is very close to each other. It's down in the 2 to 2.5 two ohm range. So that's the impedance that we used for our matching networks. And the amplifiers were designed starting at that point on the Smith chart. This shows the dynamic load line for the low power mode of operation. Now, it looks a little strange because we're extending below the, the voltage axis. Um, but the models that are provided in by this particular vendor include parasitic effects. So we don't see the load line hitting the rails on the current and voltage axes. But what we do see here is at lower power levels, it's only the carrier amp that's actually doing anything. The peaking amp is sitting and 
basically idling. As the power increases, now you can see both amplifiers carrying essentially equivalent loads. And again, we're, we're off in all four quadrants because of the parasitics included in the uh, transistor model. So here we are at the high end of the power sweep, and both devices are carrying essentially the same load. This is the top level simulation circuit, and while we have the splitter and the combiner in the overall simulation, just for clarity I've omitted them and broken out the carrier amp and the peaking amp. You can see the matching circuitry, the bias. This is the 90 degrees phase in the input side of the peaking amp, output side of the carrier amp. And this, of course, is where the combiner goes. The splitter would be in this area here. This is microwave office, our circuit level tool. And what we're showing here is the ability to take the schematic, which includes all the matching elements, the surface mount components that are used to provide DC blocks, RF chokes, and so on, bypass caps. And here we're showing our electromagnetic extraction technology to our Axiom 3D planar solver. When the lines get this wide, the circuit models are still providing reasonably accurate representation, but the width of the line really goes well beyond the range where closed form models are intended to operate. And in fact, this line is about 20 millimeters. It's wide enough to support a propagation mode. So we really need to run this kind of analysis with electromagnetic simulation. And that's handled by the uh, extract block, which is right here. So this guy relates to all the distributed elements, but not the surface mount elements. It generates the electromagnetic structure, which you see meshed here. There's ports where all the surface mount components go. And the surface mounts are automatically put back in the right place after the electromagnetic analysis is completed. So even though this is, a, I believe, a 14-port sub-circuit, you don't have anywhere a 14-port symbol that you then have to wire up. All the connectivity is established by schematic, and everything is put back together for you automatically when you run the analysis. And the color in the, the EM plot simply indicates DC connectivity. So anything that's DC connected appears in one color. Different colors, of course, are not connected. And it gives you a very quick visual cue as to whether the electromagnetic structure is properly assembled. Typical mistake that people make is not snapping the schematic layout together. Schematic layout drives the EM structure. So you get quick visual confirmation that things are indeed as you expect them before investing the time in an electromagnetic analysis. This is just a photograph of the actual NXP amplifier that they use for demonstrating these particular devices. And this is a 3D layout representation of the circuit that's simulated in microwave office. And as you can see, these are essentially identical circuits. So what we get uh, running the uncorrected Doherty amplifier is shown here. We've got uh, about 52, 52 and a half dBm out. The efficiency is peaking at about 47%. And what we're going to do now is take this into our visual system simulator and um, apply digital pre-distortion. Now, for demonstration purposes, we're using a very, very simple DPD scheme. Um, essentially, we're just going to apply inverse AM to AM, AM to PM. There's quite a bit more you can do. And actually, between the submission deadline for this paper and the show, uh, we've modified this example to show a fixed point implementation. Um, 
you can stop by our booth and talk to us about that if you're interested. This is, again, the uncorrected modulated spectrum. We've got three LTE channels. I arbitrarily assigned some different power levels. One of these guys is underneath the tower. The other one's over near the handoff point. But, you know, this is the, uh, the raw signal in blue, the amplifier output in magenta. And we're going to try and improve the, the linearity and the noise floor by applying DPD. This is the AM to AM and AM to PM. And you can see that AM to AM is starting to bend over in this rate region, and it's a very gradual compression. So on the AM to AM side, our goal is going to be to push the, the knee as far up the curve as possible before it starts to compress. And of course, we're going to want to flatten out the AM to PM as much as possible. This is the DPD, or the pre-distortion part of the system level circuit. So basically what we're doing is sampling the input power, feeding that into two lookup tables, taking those factors, combining them with a real imaginary to complex element, using that to feed a complex multiplication of the input signal, and then we're driving the amplifier with that modified signal. This is the system level diagram. So we're taking the three LTE channels, driving the amplifier uncorrected, driving a corrected version of the amplifier, and we'll compare those results. And again, the LTE signals are being driven by this sub-circuit. Uh, these are fully spec compliant LTE signals that are available in the system level tool. So this is the modified modulated spectrum. Uh, the red curve is the new spectrum after applying DPD. The blue and the magenta curves are as they were in the uncorrected plot. So you can see that we've picked up about 25 dB uh, noise floor improvement. And the AM to AM, AM to PM curves the magenta curve is linear much further out. AM to PM curve is much, much flatter until the very high end of the sweep. And in terms of efficiency, we've improved that to about 57% by applying digital pre-distortion. So the noise floor has been improved. The output power, of course, has improved. And AM to PM is nearly eliminated until the very high end of the power sweep. This uh, is just a screenshot of the entire project. The microwave office circuit schematic, the VSS system level diagram, and the various plots that go into the simulation. So appreciate your time and attention. And uh, got about a minute left to take any questions. Mm-hmm.